Welcome to the Visual Cam Quick Start Tutorial Series brought to you by Mexal. Hello everyone. What we're going to do today is give you a quick start in using uh, automatic feature machining in RhinoCam. Now automatic feature machining, also referred as AFM, is a way of automating your programming procedures so that you can get parts programmed and out to your shop in the least amount of time uh, required. And that's the goal. So there's only two requirements that you need to do or make sure you have, uh, have before you perform automatic feature machining. And the first is you need to have a solid model. Now we have a part uh, on the screen here in, uh, in Rhino, if you select your part, and look at the object type, you'll see up here it's a closed poly surface. That's a solid. And that you need that in order for RhinoCam uh, to detect your features uh, and then machine those features automatically. So the other thing that you need to have, and if you're uh, familiar with RhinoCam, previous versions of RhinoCam, uh, you'll know that we have a knowledge base uh, functionality that you can take advantage of to save your most used toolpaths and the parameters to a knowledge base. And we take advantage of that with uh, automatic feature machining. So you need to have a knowledge base. And the good thing is that RhinoCam ships with a default knowledge base, and we're going to use that uh, here in this demonstration. And you can use that default knowledge base, customize it for your own procedures and your own machining requirements. So. We have our solid model, we have it loaded, and we're going to go to the CAM preferences and set our knowledge base. If you go to CAM preferences and you select the features tab, you'll see that we have these preferences for machining features. I know you can set the different feature colors, uh, these are display colors for different uh, types of features, also the transparency for features, and you have some check boxes for turning on and off certain selection, uh, feature selection highlights and tooltips. Now, what I was getting at about assigning your uh, automatic feature machining knowledge base is you do that right here. So we're going to pick the file open button and we're going to uh, go to the program data folder in the RhinoCam install path, go to feature based machining KBs folder, and we'll select the default AFM inch uh, knowledge base. So that's all we need to do there. So now we've got a solid model, we've got a knowledge base already defined, so let's go ahead and do some uh, AFM. We'll show you how fast and easy it is and then we'll go into a little bit more detail. So we have our solid model, we'll just go down to the features tab. The features tab has a toolbar of commands. Now you do have to detect your features before you can perform automatic feature machining. So if you look at the toolbar, on start on the left and work your way to the right, uh, just like in all of our menus uh, and toolbars, uh, it'll guide you through the process. So these first two icons on the left, you have automatic feature detection, or AFD, and interactive feature detection, or IFD. So you need to detect your features and get them to show up down here in the features tree first. So let's go ahead and do automatic feature detection on this part. We'll select the icon, it'll analyze the part, and it'll list all the features that it detected in this particular part. So you see that we have a planar face feature, we have prismatic pockets. Prismatic means that uh, it's a two axis pocket with straight vertical walls. And we have another prismatic pocket, open pocket here, and we have uh, hole features, etc. So now that we have features detected, let's go ahead and do some uh, automatic feature machining. So we did automatic feature detection. We selected our features and we're going to pick the, I'll skip right to the end and we'll go over these uh, in a little bit more detail, but we'll skip right to the end and we'll pick automatic feature machining. 
And what you'll see that happened is we uh, created tool paths for this part completely and automatically. So the tool um, operation types were extracted from our knowledge base. They were matched to our features and, and they were generated and you, these, uh, this part is ready uh, to post. Now, how did we get to this point? Now, obviously, uh, we just mentioned that you need to have a knowledge base. So let's look, look, look at a little bit more detail about uh, the knowledge bases in uh, RhinoCam. So we'll go ahead and work our way from left to right. And I'll show you the interactive feature detection in a moment. But let's skip over to uh, set filters for feature detection. Here, if you're familiar with the, our earlier versions in knowledge bases, uh, you'll recognize the whole feature detection filters where you can uh, set filters to detect certain size holes and also include partial holes if you uh, have a partial hole. Uh, over here, we have another uh, tab here for global filters for feature types. And you'll see that all of our feature types uh, are checked by default. So we can detect planar faces, prismatic pockets, open prismatic pockets, general pockets, uh, open general pockets. Now the difference between prismatic and general uh, Prismatic pockets is a two-axis pocket. A general pocket is a three-axis uh, pocket, meaning you'll, you, you have to use three-axis operations, and we'll show you that. So we have bosses that you can detect, holes, obviously, fillets now you can detect, chamfers, slots, open slots. So if you have a slot that goes right off of your part uh, and it's an open slot, you can detect those, T-slots, and V-slots. Okay. So let's work our way over uh, to the left, or from left to right again. So we have all these features detected. You can also now get a report on your features by selecting uh, this icon here, list features, and it'll display the features information dialog. And it lists for automatic feature detection, all of the orientations on your part that has a detectable feature will be recognized. For instance, if you have a part uh, that needs to be machined from two sides, let's so say you need to flip it over and machine a feature from the other side. Well, with automatic feature detection, it'll recognize uh, those different orientations automatically. So you have your ori orientation uh, definition and you have your feature type. You have the name of your feature that's assigned to it. And this name here matches these names down here. And then also you have your feature parameters, such as depth, uh, diameters, etc. And you can print this out uh, to set this on your desk with you as you develop your knowledge base. Now, next one over. These two icons here, these are used to create a knowledge base or modify the default knowledge base. This is one way to do it. Um, in RhinoCam. So you have an icon for uh, create machining knowledge base for milling features and create machining knowledge base for a selected whole feature. Let's look at the milling uh, features first. This displays uh, the dialog that allows you to assign uh, feature types to uh, different operations in your knowledge base. Now, if you want to find out more about uh, knowledge bases or any dialogue in RhinoCam, just pick the help button and the online help will display and you can learn all about this particular dialogue, uh, all of the commands on the dialogue. It tells you how to use it and all of the feature machining uh, options are all documented here. Okay, so what you can do here is we can load our AFM knowledge base. Now this is a knowledge base that we assigned in CAM preferences and this is the one that there's a default knowledge base that ships with RhinoCAM. So let's load it and you'll see that we have facing operations, pocketing, slotting, profiling, drilling, and chamfering. Uh, defined so far in this default knowledge base. And you'll see that each one of these operations has a feature type assigned to it, such as uh, open prismatic pocket features, prismatic pockets, step pockets, uh, 
all these different features are assign, assigned to these operations. And you can drag and drop more operations uh, over here uh, to assign them to these operations and then save uh, your AFM knowledge base. Okay. So what if you have whole features? So there's another icon here for creating and editing your knowledge base for a whole feature. For whole features, you do have to select one down here. So we select your whole feature ahead of time and pick Create Machining Knowledge Base for Selected Whole Feature. And you'll see this dialog. And if you're familiar with knowledge bases in previous versions of RhinoCam, uh, you'll recognize this dialog. It allows you to actually create a set of toolpath operations for a whole feature. Now what we're going to do is on the right, you'll see the cross section of this particular whole feature 11. So, and you'll see that whole feature 11 is listed here. So how do you want to machine this whole feature 11 when it, when uh, automatic feature machining finds a feature that matches this? So we'll go ahead and drag our uh, available operations from the left over to our whole feature. So. We likely want to start with a um, center drill operation. So we'll take the center drill and we'll drag it over here and drop it. Next, we want to do a standard drill. We'll drag it over. And then we have a chamfer at the top, so we want to do some chamfering. So let's drag that over and drop it. And you'll see that uh, this whole feature 11 now has these hole making operations assigned to it. And you'll see that uh, the parameters uh, are defined as well. So now you can save this uh, in your automatic feature machining knowledge base and then update it uh, for features that you rec whole features that you recognize. So if you have a whole feature that's not in your knowledge base and it gets recognized here, you can add it to your knowledge base. Okay. So now we talked about uh, automatic feature machining. Now, what if you need to make changes later on, say to a toolpath operation that's in your knowledge base, and uh, you don't know the changes until you actually create the operation and simulate it, and you decide, well, that's not going to work. I got to change it. So what you can do is you can, once you have your uh, features detected and you perform automatic feature machining and you have your tool paths uh, generated up here you can go ahead and edit those and you can uh, modify any just like uh, any tool path in RhinoCam you can make any changes here for example uh, let's say you want to change the cut pattern you can generate that let's say you want to change the cut pattern there, let's say for pocketing that you want to change say the cut pattern from high speed say to offset or if you want to change uh, any any parameter so let's generate that so now we have an offset uh, toolpath cut pattern for that particular uh, two and a half axis pocketing operation so now you've made changes to these and you've generated them now just you can select the setup if you want to just add all of these back into your knowledge base select the setup and right click pick save to knowledge base and that'll open up the dialog and select your knowledge base that you're currently using and it'll add the, it won't override all of it it'll just merge the new information into it okay now what if you don't want to detect all of your features or what if, what if uh, some features are bogus features. Let's say that they don't need to be machined. Well, you don't want to detect them if they're not going to be machined. So you can perform interactive feature detection uh, in order to perform automatic feature machining. So let's go ahead and get rid of these features for now. We'll delete those and you'll see that now all of our tool paths are dirty. So let's go ahead and just delete the setup. So now we have no, no features recognized, no operations generated. Now let's say that we just want to uh, select features uh, interactively. So we can select the icon here for interactive feature detection and it'll ask you to, to select a planar face. So we'll select the face, 
right click and it'll analyze that face and it'll determine what features are required to machine just those features. So we have the feature uh, planar face, we have a set of holes, and we have our chamfers at the top of the holes. Now you can still perform automatic feature machining from your knowledge base just on these selected features. So we'll just select our features and we'll perform AFM and it adds the necessary operations required just to requ uh, machine those features. So let's go ahead and, and delete this again. We'll delete our features, we'll delete our setup, we'll perform our automatic feature machining, and then we'll perform automatic feature, uh, that was automatic feature detection, this is automatic feature machining. So we got all of our tool paths defined, and let's go ahead and do a, a quick simulation of this. So all of this you know, the editing of the tool paths and simulation, all that, uh, if you're familiar with RhinoCam, is all the same. So let's go ahead and select the setup, go to the simulate tab, speed this up a little bit, and pick play. And if you don't want to wait, we can speed this up a little bit further. So here's our tool paths for this particular part. We have it uh, features detected automatic feature machining performed, tool paths generated and uh, created and generated, and then we simulated them, and now you can just right click and post. So that's how fast and easy it is uh, to use AFM and RhinoCam. Now one last thing I want to show you before I uh, quit the video is you can also perform uh, interactive feature machining. I know we're, we're throwing a lot of acronyms out at you, uh, but let's um, go over them uh, real quickly here. We have automatic feature detection, interactive feature detection, and we have automatic feature machining. Now what if you want to just want machine uh, one particular feature? You don't want to do all of them or you don't want to go through the process of doing all of them. So let's go back over to the program tab and let's say uh, let's delete some of these uh, tool paths. Okay, so we just have our setup and we have our features. Now, what you can do is you can um, select one of the features, just right click on it, and it'll display a list uh, of feature types available or compatible with that particular a list of operation types that are compatible with that feature type. And interactively here you can also perform automatic feature machining on this feature or you can go in and select a different knowledge base uh, to use uh, for this machining this particular feature. Let's say you want to do a facing operation and all of this is, is the same as it is in previous versions of RhinoCam. You can interactively uh, define a tool path for this particular feature. So one other thing I wanted to mention too is you can also highlight, uh, just highlight a feature and it'll tell you uh, information uh, about that feature. Now let's go back over into the preferences and I want to show you one last thing before I leave. I know we're running a little bit over but I think this you'll like this as well. So let's turn on our context tooltips and we'll also turn on or make sure our uh, pre-selecting highlights and pre-selection informational tool that turned on uh, for features. Let's pick OK. So now what you'll see is if you select a feature down here, you'll see that it highlights uh, a tooltip that tells you about the feature. Let's say that we had a pocket. It tells you the depth of the pocket and it lets you know uh, information about that just by highlighting it uh, in the features tree. And also I, I mentioned that you can get information by highlighting it over here. Well that's it for now. Stay tuned for more videos from Mechsoft Corporation on automatic feature machining, interactive feature machining, automatic feature detection, interactive feature detection, and a whole lot more. Thank you. Bye-bye. For further assistance, you can visit the online help supplied with the program or visit www.mexsoft.com for additional tutorials. Thank you.